Let's say you've been spending countless nights in your basement researching, experimenting, and training, and after months of effort, you finally build a super advanced LLM before anyone else. Now you want to figure out how to deploy this LLM and make it available to the public so people can actually start using it. Except there's one major problem. The model you built needs an infrastructure to actually run it. So somehow you have to figure out how to deploy this model and you're not exactly sure how. It's not like you can just upload it to Google Drive and let people access it that way. So the question comes down to this. How do I deploy this model so that people can actually start using it? Since your computer probably can't run this model, the first thing you might do is to look up cloud systems like AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure to host this model in the cloud. And once you have this proper infrastructure set up and serve the model for inference, you can now sit back and enjoy as people start using this model for the first time. And luckily, you got millions and millions of people excited to use this model. But here's a problem. You haven't actually set up the proper way to manage the load. And now requests are starting to slow down and time out. And people are complaining that this model is not very stable. Now you realize that you need to implement a system, a system that helps you manage this infrastructure that is running the model. And luckily, you find out there's a system called Kubernetes that helps you this very problem. And with Kubernetes, you can now set up a system for load balancing and setting up a server with a resilient system and have proper scaling up and down depending on the demand. And thankfully, with the help of Kubernetes, you can sit back and allow the machine to run smoothly on its own. Now the model is live, users are floating in to try out the model and life is good. And people using your system are now requesting for more features. They want updates, they want fine-tuned versions, and they want custom APIs for enterprise use cases. All of which is a huge potential to have more people use the model, as long as you can actually meet these demands. So even though you have the infrastructure layer that runs the model and you have a system in place that manages the infrastructure, you realize that you don't really have a workflow in place that allows the model to be flexible as a business case changes. You want to implement a machine learning workflow that helps you develop and deploy this model. So you divide up the workflow in two large phases, development and production. For the development phase, you need to do some data preparation where you take the raw data that's typically used to train AI models and do some feature engineering to essentially only extract meaningful data and prepare them as training data that will be used to train the model. After the data preparation, you want to actually start doing some model development where you can be creative in creating and modifying AI models that might be best suited for what you're trying to do. Once the model is ready, you need to have a workflow that can support actually training the model with the data that we prepared. And since training is a huge computationally heavy step, this workflow also needs to assign proper GPU loads and spin up and spin down as needed for training the model. And finally, your workflow needs to include model optimization where you can apply different hyperparameters and optimize a model before it's final. And the development phase then passes over all these tasks to production phase to then serve the model in production for people and applications to use this model. Orchestrating this entire workflow is not an easy endeavor and you'll soon find out that Kubeflow is a system that allows deploying scaling and managing AI platforms, which in our case, it's exactly what we needed. So now we have cloud providers serving the model in their infrastructure, Kubernetes as a system that manages containers, scaling, and networking, and now Kubeflow that manages the ML lifecycle. You can now confidently service this brand new model for people to use that's agile. Now that we covered the theory side of where Kubeflow actually fits in, let's run some labs so that you can actually try to learn how to use the system for managing ML workflows. Welcome to this hands-on lab on Catib, Kubeflow's powerful hyperparameter optimization component. Finding the perfect hyperparameters for machine learning models can take weeks of manual experimentation. In this lab, you learn how to automate this entire process using Kubernetes native workflows that scale effortlessly. Let's start by understanding where Catup fits in the Kubeflow ecosystem. Kubeflow has three layer architecture designed for production machine learning. The control plane manages ML workloads with specialized components. Catup handles hyperparameter tuning, pipelines orchestrate complex workflows, and KServe deploys model with auto-scaling. The data plane is where actual training jobs execute on Kubernetes pods, leveraging the cluster's compute resources. The orchestration layer is Kubernetes itself, providing enterprise-grade capabilities like parallel experiments, resource isolation, automatic failure recovery, and multi-tenancy. This isn't just academic. Production companies like Spotify, PayPal, and Lyft run their ML platforms on this architecture. After reviewing this architecture, 
A quick knowledge check confirms your understanding. Now let's dive into CatTip's core concepts. Think of an experiment as a complete hyperparameter tuning job from start to finish. Each trial within that experiment tests one specific combination of parameter values. The objective is the metric you want to optimize, whether that's maximizing accuracy or minimizing loss. You'll see CatTip's internal architecture diagram, showing how the experiment controller coordinates the trial controllers and suggestion services Understanding these relationships is crucial. We also compare four popular search algorithms to help you choose the right one. Random search simply samples parameters combinations randomly. It's simple, but doesn't learn from previous results. Bayesian optimization is smarter. It builds a probabilistic model of objective function and uses previous trials to intelligently select the next parameters to test. Greed search exhaustively tests every combination in your search space, thorough but computationally expensive. Hyperband takes a different approach using adaptive resource allocation to quickly eliminate poor performing configurations. With concepts clear, it's time to install CatTip. We're deploying version 0.17 using Python setup script. The script handles everything, deploying the CatTip controllers, database manager, MySQL for persistence, and the web UI. The script waits patiently for all pods to reach a running state, which takes about two to three minutes. And finally, it configures a UI as a node port service so you can access it easily from your browser. Accessing the CatTib web interface is straightforward. Simply click the CatTib UI at the top of your lab interface. The button automatically includes the correct slash CatTib slash path. Visual guides show you exactly where to find this button and what the experiment dashboards look like when it loads. Don't forget to select the Kubeflow namespace from the drop-down menu. This is where all your experiments will appear. Before running any experiments, we verify your Python environment is ready. The verification script checks for essential packages. The CatTib SDK for pragmatic experimental submissions, Kubernetes client for cluster interaction, scikit-learn for machine learning, and pandas for data manipulation. Running this check prevents frustrating runtime errors later. Now, let's understand the anatomy of a CatTib experiment before we run one. Every experiment needs four key elements the objective function you want to optimize, a search space defining the valid range of each parameter, the optimization algorithm to use, and the total number of trials to run. The beauty of CatTib is that it runs these trials in parallel across separate Kubernetes pods, automatically logging all parameters and metrics. No manual checking is required. Time for the exciting part, running your first experiment. Experiment one optimizes a simple mathematic function, f equals four times a minus b squared. This keeps things simple so you can focus on understanding CatTip's workflow without the complexity of a real ML model. Run the provided scripts and wait for four to five minutes for all trials to complete. The question includes helpful troubleshooting tips in case you encounter errors, like how to delete existing experiments if you need to start fresh. Once your experiment finishes, the real learning begins with visualization. The CatTip UI provides powerful insights into your experiment results. Following the step-by-step -step visualization guide, Open the CatTip UI, select the Kubeflow namespace, locate your simple math experiment in the list. View the trial tables showing all parameter combinations, examine the results graph plotting objective values across trials, click individual trials to see detailed execution logs and identify the best performing trial. The visualization makes it crystal clear how different parameter combinations performed. For this function, the best parameters should be A equals 20 and B approximately 0.1 yielding a result near 80. Congratulations, you've successfully run and visualized your first CatTip experiment. You now understand the core workflow, but we've included two additional operational experiments for those who want to go deeper on their own time. Experiment two compares random search versus Bayesian optimization on the same objective function, letting you see firsthand how Bayesian's intelligence exploration converges faster to better results. Experiment three tackles a real world problem optimizing logistic regression classifier for SMS spam deletion. It optimizes CatTib's integration with Scikit-Learn and optimizes practical hyperparameters like regularization strengths and train tests split ratio. Both experiments include complete working examples and take four to five minutes to run. These are completely optional enrichment activities not required to complete the lab. The optional experiment section provides all the details if you decide to try them. Experiment two runs both algorithms side by side so you can directly compare their search strategies and convergence patterns. Experiment three gives you a hands-on experiment with real ML workflows showing how to structure your training code for CatTip and what hyperparameters matter most for production models. 
Congratulations on completing this CATIB lab. You've gained valuable skills in Kubeflow architecture, CATIB experiment design, Kubernetes-based ML workflows, and results visualizations. These aren't just theoretical concepts, these are the exact same tools and techniques used by data science teams and major tech companies. You can now automate hyperparameter search instead of tuning manually, optimize ML models for production deployment with confidence, and run distributed experiments that scale across large Kubernetes clusters. The two optional experiments are waiting whenever you're ready to deepen your expertise. Great work.